Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 700, written by Armored Meerkat. Lights in the sky that don't behave. This happened around 1993, maybe 1994. I lived in Europe at that time and was house-sitting for my mom. It was a great midsummer night and I woke up around 2am to go to the bathroom. I have problems going back to sleep if I wake up during the night, so I decided to sit on the back porch and have a cigarette. I was facing south and was admiring the starry sky. No clouds and light pollution was not bad. All of a sudden, two dots started to move. They moved clockwise at a mid-speed, not zooming but not crawling either. They made a 180 degree turn and one shot one direction, the other one to the opposite direction. I was stunned. The next day, I called our local observatorium and asked them if that's normal occurrence in the night sky. They told me they had never heard of anything like this before. What were those lights? Case file number 701, written by Kaka, other words I can't quite say. I guarantee you've never heard of a coincidence this extraordinary. Okay, so I go to the grocery store around 6ish to pick up food for the week. I use the self-checkout and I'm walking straight towards the automatic doors to leave, and a couple walks in. The girl catches my eye because she has a very detailed tattoo of a dragon on her thigh. I admire the tattoo for a second, just as she slightly stumbles on the floor mat which causes her glasses to fall off her face and onto the floor. She bends down to pick them up and proceeds past me. I get home cook my meals which take an hour or so, I go into my bathroom and my cat has knocked over my toothbrush which is now being chewed by my dog. I have no extra so I hop back in my car to go back to the grocery store for a toothbrush replacement. It is around 8ish. I grab the toothbrush but this time I have to go to a regular register because the self checkout is closed. My route to the doors is different this time. I have to walk down the aisle in front of the registers and the doors are to my right. Just as I'm getting to the door, the same exact couple walk in. The dragon tattoo is a dead giveaway. The girl then stumbles on the floor mat again, drops her glasses and then kneels down to pick them up again. No expression, nothing indicating that it's weird that this happened again to her. I literally made a what the hell face and felt so confused. I got back in my car and just thought of the sheer amount of coincidences that just happened and the lack of reaction from the girl. I saw this couple once, the girl dropped her glasses and picked them up. My dog just so happens to chew my toothbrush causing me to go back to the same grocery store hours later. Somehow, this couple not only needed to come back too, as well as to the same store as I, but to do so at the exact same time as me, where we meet in the exact same place and the same manner. Then the cherry on top, the girl stumbles and drops her glasses again in the same way. It was just truly weird and impossibly coincidental. Bonus file, written by White Glinko, The Mystery of a Mountain and the Hum of an Angel. I have recently moved to Weed, California, a small town next to Mount Shasta, for work. I'm an avid hiker and love exploring, so naturally two days ago I decided to go hike the mountain on one of my days off. Not entirely sure why, but I decided to drive my car very deep into the forest surrounding the base of the mountain, as far as a dirt road would allow me. It was around 3pm with a clear sky, so I was very confident and enjoying the scenery as I got out of my car and started my hike, heading closer to the mountain. At first it was your regular everyday hike, lots of birds and squirrels around, with that smell of nature that fills your lungs as you walk across the terrain. It wasn't until I reached a small dried up river that I noticed something was off. As I stopped to look at the dried up river and take pictures, I noticed that it was strangely very very quiet. No birds were chirping, no signs of squirrels or other animals, and even the sound of the wind you hear when you're on a mountain seemed to be completely gone. At the time, I thought it was just an odd coincidence and started walking up alongside the river. But as I kept walking and being able to only hear my own footsteps, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Not the kind of feeling that makes you think someone is outside your window watching you, 
The kind of feeling that makes you feel multiple people or things are observing your every movement, studying you. I've never had that kind of feeling in my life, but what happened after made me completely forget that feeling. I suddenly started to hear something out of nowhere that sounded like angelic humming or maybe a song with no lyrics, but it also sounded strangely electric, like the sound telephone lines make. It wasn't very loud, but enough to make me look in the direction it was coming from. I looked to the other side of the dried up river that had multiple trees and other foliage to see someone or something looking straight at me. It almost looked like a ghost with it looking completely white, but this thing was very clearly there, not translucent. It almost looked like it was wearing a robe, but I couldn't see any feet, hands, or even a face, although it had an oval head. However, I could feel it looking straight at me, almost as if it was trying to remember every detail. Even from far away, I could tell that its entire body had a very weird texture, almost like porcelain, but if porcelain was a silky fabric, it was very obviously not human. I was very understandably in complete shock and terror, frozen in place, kind of scary. We both looked at each other for what felt like forever, but it was most likely around 20 to 30 seconds. I, very, very slowly, started walking backwards. I don't think I took more than two steps when it tilted its head, as if it was curious or even surprised at what I was doing. All the while, I could still hear that electric angelic humming, and I swear it got a little louder when I took those steps back. When I turned my head to look behind me, to make sure that the way was clear so I could run, the song suddenly stopped, abruptly, without warning. This shocked me, and when I turned back to look at the thing, it was gone. No sign of it anywhere. As soon as I saw that it disappeared, I ran as fast as I could, following the path I took back. Even after it had disappeared, and while I was running, I could still feel like I was being watched from all sides. I almost tripped a few times in how fast I was going. When I got to my car, sounds of animals and the mountain wind suddenly came back, but I was still scared out of my mind and drove as fast as I could away from the mountain. I've never had anything paranormal happen to me in the past and I've honestly always been very skeptical of stuff like that. But this experience has left me questioning a lot of things. I don't think I want to go back on that mountain. I've even had a nightmare about the experience. I'm not even sure what I saw or what to call it or what I heard. Case notes for the bonus file. The mystery of a mountain and the hum of an angel. So Mount Shasta is an interesting one. There's various legends, local and even global, that say that it's home to some crystal beings or beings that have transcended space and time. Sort of like Stargate lore, where there's ascended beings, uh, we can reach a certain point in our intellectual development where we learn how to shed our corporeal form and transcend into pure energy. It's an interesting and kind of cool thought. Of course, that's not the final journey either. Now I don't know if I buy into all of that exactly. Uh, I think it's interesting and fun. I think when there's a lot of legends about a specific place, it's worth looking into and my mind perks up. Because even if all the accounts and myths aren't exactly precisely accurate, it does indicate usually that something is going on there that's a bit odd. A sort of where there's smoke there must be fire, but on the paranormal side. And a lot of other people think this way. Uh, Mount Shasta has over 30,000 visitors annually, probably less over the past two years, but that actually might accelerate or increase how much paranormal or glitch activity is there. If you think about a big city, there's not a lot of paranormal activity going on there. There's just too many humans and we've reconstructed the environment to our suiting. The natural state of the world is gone. But then you go to a completely wild and preserved location like Mount Shasta, you may have indigenous tribes living there. Maybe the man you saw was indeed just a man. Maybe you say he didn't have a face. Maybe he was wearing some sort of um, faceless mask so as to not to scare predators. Maybe he was a tribal hunter. Now the hum, that's more mysterious. You could say, okay, well maybe the tribe has some sort of singer, vocalist, I mean even tribal people need music and entertainment, so that's not inconceivable. The weird part is the electronic undertones as you describe. A random indigenous tribe on a mountain isn't going to have solar panels and a vocal amplifier, 
Maybe it was a collection of echoes, ghosts, or spirits. The leftover remnants of people who've died from this tribe, who stick around as guardians of some sort. So, guardian angels, but really, guardian echoes. Case file number 702, written by Rune Yu. How did I hear that? Or should I say, when did I hear that? This is a small but very weird thing that happened to me. I lost my debit card and had to go to the bank to get a new one. It's a small local bank that has desks kind of spread out but in this big lobby with offices along the walls. The woman who greeted me had me sit at one of the desks near the door. We had a small conversation and she had to pick out a design for my card. I chose a bright obnoxious color and joked about how it was so I wouldn't lose it this time. She then excused herself to go print the card out and I was left sitting with my back to where she went and the rest of the bank. As I was pretending to look busy on my phone, I heard a conversation start up somewhere off behind me. It was that teller's voice and she was kind of talking quietly and basically repeating our conversation, saying how I got a bright pink card with a funky design so I hopefully wouldn't lose it. The specific card I picked out and the reason why and the joke I told with it all were mentioned. I thought it was weird that she wouldn't wait until I left to have this conversation and thought that maybe she thought I couldn't hear her since she was on the other side of the lobby, so I just didn't turn to look, not wanting to make it awkward. Just as I decided not to look, she walks up besides me and scares me to death. She wasn't across the lobby, she was right there and talking as those other voices died out. I turn to look and there's no one across the lobby. This freaked me out because she had a really distinct voice and laugh. I remember being really uncomfortable and certain that she was over there relaying our conversation to her coworker. Then she just appears besides me with the card, coming from a completely different area. There wasn't even anyone over where I heard the voices from. 